Uh, hello, uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. So my name is David Perez. I'm a solution architect working for L5 Networks. Um, uh, mainly covering the service provider market. So I don't know if there are any any, any people working in service providers like mobile or fixed fixed network in the audience. But uh, if you are, uh, feel free to ask me questions uh, at the end of the presentation or in the networking event. Um, the agenda is uh, pretty straightforward, so I will just discuss about the uh, implementations that F5 is doing for OpenStack. Um, the way F5 can be provide, provide uh, network services uh, in your OpenStack data center uh, with the same quality as, as you would use in traditional uh, physical data centers. So first of all, uh, regarding OpenStack, uh, this year we can finally say that we are all in, and this is a sentence I have stolen from my colleague John Gruber, who was speaking at the OpenStack Summit in Austin, I don't know if you have been there, but it, it was a really great presentation where he was uh, stressing the fact that uh, SPAC, uh, F5 has been working with OpenStack for quite a few years, but during the last year we have made big, big investments and um, dedicated a facility in um, Boulder, Colorado, where we have um, product development and testing and dedicated data centers that are using heat for orchestrating the different uh, procedures. We also have dedicated business development teams that are working with uh, commercial distributions in OpenStack. Um, I will talk about that in the next slide. And of course, we are a member of the OpenStack uh, Foundation since we acknowledge this is the, the footprint of the future and today. So, uh, the ecosystem. So, when we go to our, visit our customers and talk about the five running in OpenStack, uh, they don't really quite much believe it until they see it in the page of, of, the, of the vendor of the distribution. And uh, this is one reason we have uh, validated and tested our solutions with uh, all the main commercial distributions of OpenStack. And I would say that uh, they are not maybe all equally important for us. Uh, we have, because they are not equally important for our customers either, right? So we have put the most emphasis on, on those on the top right. Uh, my is Red Hat and HP are the most well tested and the most integrated, but of course any of them are, are possible for us. Um, in this section uh, I will talk a little bit about the implementations we have out uh, for, for OpenStack uh, with F5. And, uh, since we are a lot, uh, known to be a load balancing company, but we do much more than that, we do network security services, uh, we do DDoS protection, we do VPNs and many other things. Um, first, I want to stress the difference between these, these two technologies that we're offering to our customers. So, Elbus uh, is used to deploy the load balancing network service, as you have heard from the previous presenter as well. And it is used to orchestrate uh, application infrastructure. Some, some more details about these two technologies that might help you to differentiate them is that uh, Elbus uh, is an open, OpenStack Neutron project. Uh, it, uh, it collects a minimal common set of functionality for load balancing that has been agreed in the OpenStack community. And it gives you the advantage that if you ever uh, get tired of using L5, you can replace it with a different vendor and vice versa. We can be re replacing a different vendor without making changes to your configurations, the configuration standard. But that has also limitations. It's, it's multi-tenant, but it has limitations. And to overcome those limitations, we have heat. Um, with it, uh, you can basically uh, deploy not only a service but also infrastructure. You can you can deploy infrastructure from OpenStack, but you can deploy configuration in in those virtual machines that you deploy in OpenStack using heat as well. So it's a tool that covers all, all possible options for you. And the five acknowledge this, and, and we have uh, heat templates uh, for you. <coughs> Uh, an advantage as well of it is that it's flexible, uh, it's composable, so it means that you can run heat templates inside it in place and multi-tenant aware, so it has all the features that you can get from, from, from Elbus. So maybe to explain a little bit more, when would you use uh, Elbus and when would you use heat in, in, within a 5 solution? So when you do something like, uh, you want to do something like simple TCP application load balance, uh, you could do that with Elbus. When you want to load balance a web portal or a secure web portal using HTTPS, uh, you could also do that with Elbus. But uh, if you want to deploy a, a advanced uh, DDoS protection uh, for your data center in a F5 firewall, or you want to do a VPN uh, based on SSL IPsec or something else, uh, 
um, or maybe you want to, to deploy your Microsoft uh, application in, in your IT data center, which could be a SharePoint or Exchange. As you know, those are very well integrated with the five load balancers and recommended by Microsoft, but the configurations are really complicated, uh, so it's good to have hit to automate those. So, to move it a little bit further, uh, uh, in order to simplify the heat uh, templates for, for our administrators, uh, we have the develop a plugin, uh, which is a piece of software that uh, uh, heat supports, uh, that is, uh, it uses to support uh, F5 configurations, and to support them in a similar way as the rest of the infrastructure that you have in OpenStack. Um, maybe I can go over that in a little bit more detail in the next slide. So. Uh, this is how uh, client floating IP, uh, type neutron floating IP resource looks in a typical heat template, very simple template. And uh, with the five heat templates uh, or plugin, uh, you get a new type of object uh, or resource, which is that instead of using uh, OS colon colon, it uses F5 colon colon, and it maps to our uh, object, uh, object, object map tree. So, for example, in this case, you have an object called uh, IAM full template, which is a configuration template that we are going to talk about in, in, in briefly. And uh, you can see also that it depends on other object that is also an F5 object, which is called partition. Uh, partition is like administrative uh, division of our configuration so that you can share F5 virtual machines or, or um, physical devices uh, using different tenants, so it's key for multi tenants. And IAP, the IAP uh, object that we were presenting in the, in the previous template. So IAP is a cornerstone of F5 uh, application configuration and lifecycle management. And what I mean by this is that uh, uh, with IAPs you get like an easy button. You get like a simple wizard that you can use to deploy F5 configurations that cover all the necessary aspects of an application such as Microsoft Exchange. And you don't really have to know F5 to deploy, you just have to know Exchange, you just have to know your application. So you go through the wizard, answer all the questions, and click deploy, and it gets deployed in F5 device, right? So this is a very, very useful tool for orchestration, because the same tool can be used by uh, API, right? So you can enter all the, all the answers to the questions using uh, an API, and, and this allows you to automate basically any configuration uh, from F5, whether it's a firewall, or balancer, VPN, So, uh, the math in orchestration with F5 is very simple. We have F5 uh, IAPs and we have HIT and our HIT plugin. So, with those two together, you get really easy to deploy uh, and maintain uh, layer 4 to layer 7 uh, network services for OpenStack infrastructure and tenants. Um, uh, one thing that I forgot to mention about uh, IAPs is that uh, they allow re-entry and this means that once you have deployed your application uh, configuration in F5 device, so it would be firewall or load balancer, if you decide to change the configuration, you can run again through, you can run again this IAP template and while your traffic is live, it will change the configuration to different IPs, to different settings or whatever you need. So this is a very important feature. And it also keeps your configurations consistent because these IAPs are templatized configurations repeatable and tested by F5 or our professional services or even your own uh, DevOps teams. Um, moving on, um, let's talk about the tenancy models that F5 support for OpenStack. Uh, F5 acknowledged that uh, OpenStack has a very well-defined tenancy model and we have to support it if we want to play, play in OpenStack. So, as you can see in this picture, we support multi-tenant deployments and single-tenant deployments. What is the difference? So the difference is that multi-tenant deployments uh, share uh, our devices. Whether they are physical or virtual, they can be shared. And this is interesting because you can use a virtual machine like here that is shared by multiple tenants. These are virtual machines, but still share. Uh, you don't necessarily have to buy hardware from A5. And of course, you can dedicate the, the hardware or the software to single-tenant if so you wish. In the multi-tenant deployments, uh, of course, we would connect to the, to the network provider networks, and uh, it's important to say here that we support uh, all the overlay mecha mechanisms that are standard in OpenStack, so VXLAN, URE, and others to come in the future, and maybe GNI for extensions to VXLAN, and those things will be supported as well. Um, and this, this makes it possible to extend uh, the layer 2 from the tenants directly into, into our devices and to share them across all those tenants. 
and everything is managed by, by neutrons, so we are not uh, really doing anything different than other vendors here. Um, then the other option is, of course, dedicating the virtual machine, uh, letting the tenant deploy this virtual machine in these ne networks, which are also controlled by, net by neutron. Um, but in this case, the F5 is not aware of or the underlying, underlying, especially when deployed as a virtual machine, is not aware of the underlying uh, overlay uh, structure. Uh, even in this case, you can still share the big IP. And how can you share it? It's by using IAPS again. So a single tenant can deploy any number of IAPS in the same uh, device or cluster of devices. And these IAPS can be from the same application or different applications. So it gives you the, still the possibility to re reduce to the maximum uh, your F5 investment. Then moving to something more open stack uh, related than the IAPS themselves even, um, we will talk about the onboarding process. Um, onboarding is what happens when you deploy an F5 virtual machine from Horizon or CLI into your open stack cloud. Uh, so we have created a script uh, that it is included in the, in the F5 uh, virtual edition, uh, or it is injected by some of other scripts, as I will explain soon. Uh, that allows you to harden the security of your of your load balancer for OpenStack, and there you are, we are doing things such as uh, we are securing uh, initial passwords of the of the virtual machine because, as you know, when you download something from the support side, the F5 or other vendors, they come with default passwords and they are all over your uh, support manual. So you don't want anybody to uh, hack into your virtual machine, but just by using the common passwords that are available to everyone. So this. Uh, this script will make sure that you get a random password that is only visible through the console of OpenStack. So the, the administrator and the tenant can be looking at the console and check the password to, to change it to whatever he wants, but at least it's secure and it cannot be stolen. Then you can also inject the SSH keys for powers less uh, security uh, access, maybe for orchestration purposes. Um, we can adjust I mean, MTU settings, we can auto-configure the data plane and management plane interfaces uh, from Neutron. All of this happens thanks to this uh, script that we have injected. And of course, the licensing is automated. Uh, only requirements is that um, we must use uh, version 11.5 or higher. It's already a pretty old version from F5. Uh, and it, it requires the use of Nova Metadata Services because what the script is doing is just basically sending queries to the Nova Metadata Services, which is where the actual data is stored, such as, for example, the SSH keys and, and all of those things that Tenant is using. Okay, so moving on, um, before you can do the, what you saw in the previous slide, you need to import your F5 images into plans, right? And, there are quite many uh, F5 virtual edition images uh, for different uh, different versions of the software. There is also some virtual image for your centralized management, and all of them have to be imported into plans if you want to ever use them in you know, OpenStack Cloud. So you could do that manually, but it's kind of a tedious process, especially if you also want to include the uh, hardening from the previous script that I was mentioning that has to be injected in some of those versions. So in order to automate that, we created a hit template uh, that can be run uh, by an uh, by a administrator account because it's really uh, plugging into the kind of uh, privileged places of your OpenStack uh, cloud. And uh, it, it will basically download those images that you have previously downloaded from our support site and place in a local web server in the, some provider network of, of your data center. And uh, we will, it will modify the image in, injecting the script for, for the initial configuration that was playing in the, in the previous slide and, and kind of create the imported images in glance. And after that, any tenant or administrator can deploy F5 images in, in, into the uh, cloud. Uh, another thing that uh, we have taken care of is the high availability of our services um, and here we haven't uh, invented anything new as well. We, we are using the same high availability mechanism as in our physical uh, virtual machines, uh, physical or virtual, or virtual instances of F5. They use uh, this technology called device service clustering that allows clusters of up to uh, eight uh, machines, or they can be virtual or physical. 
And these are stateful clusters, which means that when one of them goes down, all the services in this uh, virtual machine can go to any of the others and the uh, order of the failover and, and you can even do uh, load-based failover and kind of uh, smart ways to, to do the uh, transferring of the, of the failed services to other, uh, other instances. Um, and of course, uh, what happens in OpenStack is that it's a software-defined network. So when you configure IPs that are necessary for this clustering mechanism, Neutron have to have to know about them, and they have to know it has to know that these IPs can be moved from one IP from one virtual edition to the other. So in order to do that, you have to run certain Neutron commands, and that can be a bit slow and tedious. So we created again uh, hit templates that will do all of this. They will deploy the virtual machines, they will put them in a cluster, license them and so on, and have them ready to deploy additional services, whatever services uh, F5 is providing in your cloud. Um, maybe I'm going a little bit fast because I'm getting close to the end, but uh, I try to slow down. So um, This part is about LBAS. Um, LBAS is a uh, standardized the balancing as a service that uh, we have seen in the previous presentation, so F5 already has also one of these plugins. Um, this is the first version that was supported by F5. Previously, it was only supported by the community, which means which meant that if there was any problem with the pack, with the plugin, uh, you couldn't you couldn't call uh, five support, but now you can. Anything after this version is supported. Um, this is kind of the overall architecture. It's kind of a standard thing that you have uh, standard interfaces from, from OpenStack, Horizon, CLI, and, and HIT. And through those, you can enter those standard parameters of a load balancing configuration, which is some tenables to load balancing of web servers or whatever applications it has. It has to enter a VIP, then a pool, then a list of pool members, which are your instances. And it can configure some basic, some basic things, such as a couple of uh, load balancing uh, algorithms, and, and anything that the community has decided to include in here, right? Then the rest is more modified proprietary, or let's say more of the five features that are not visible to the tenants, but help you help the administrator to configure additional powers and to improve the, improve the scalability of the solution. As you can see, you can you can attach uh, Elba service to uh, physical or virtual virtual deployments, and we have an interesting feature I will discuss in the next slides. So the first thing to discuss is about uh, how how is going to be the topology uh, for this Elba service uh, where I'm going to place my load balancer, especially if it's physical, but the same problems arise if you are thinking about uh, virtual. And we have mainly two two modes. Uh, one of them is the most simple from the routing point of view, or let's say the most simple from the configuration of the F5 side point of view, which is the global root mode, in which uh, all the routing has been taken care of by a SDN controller or neutron or something like that. And uh, then the F5 only has to deploy like the layer 4 to layer 7 details, like the VIP for listening to the load balance traffic and, and the IPs of the members in your, in your pools. And this is the case maybe when, when you have a uh, 5 close to the edge after some router, virtual or physical, and, and you have configured all the routing so that the nodes can reach the F5, the F5 can reach the nodes, and the outside world if necessary. But the most common, common setup is this one, uh, in which uh, F5 reaches uh, uh, the layer 2 of all the subnets, uh, all the layer 2 domains created by the tenants. Um, every tenant can create their own subnets and uh, using Neutron as the engine to do that. Um, when, uh, when they specify those subnets in, into the Elbas configuration, the Elbas agent will create uh, necessary uh, overlay termination points into the F5. So for example, if this is a BNI for VXLAN, uh, for a tenant A that will be created in the F5 so that it can reach up to the virtual machines of that tenant. And this is, for example, a two-arm deployment in which there are some clients and some servers, and both of them are reaching the, the F5, uh, this chassis power for the Ethereum platform. Uh, but the same would be happening if this was a virtual machine, so it doesn't have to be a, a physical, physical appliance or uh, chassis. Then uh, F5, a specific feature is this simultaneous support for uh, multiple LBAS services. And what it means is that you can deploy uh, 
parallel Erba services, each of them associated to different cluster of F5 bits, and uh, each of them associated to different tenant. And the tenants could be classified uh, as belonging to different development uh, environment, development testing and production, for example, which is quite a common division in many companies. So you don't want your development guys accessing the production uh, uh, machines and vice versa, your production modifying the Elvas configurations of your uh, testing environment. So, so this, uh, this allows us with a single Elvas deployment, uh, let's say three parallel deployments, each of them dedicated to one of these with a configuration parameter that changes between them, test and production, uh, to have dedicated, uh, dedicated uh, configurations depending on the tenant you're using. Uh, and then regarding the scalability, um, this is something pretty good from, from F5 that we have a continuous measuring of the capacity of our clusters. So those clusters that you pre previous to the configuration of the Elvis plugin have deployed uh, will be measured constantly by the Elvis plugin and it will report this information to, to Neutron so that it can decide if it effectively where to send the next Elvis configuration based on how loaded my cluster of virtual machines is. So you can have multiple clusters and you can have multiple um, uh, machines within the cluster. So where the next configuration will go depends on how the clusters are loaded and how each of the machines in the, in the cluster is loaded. And those parameters are, uh, that are used to decide uh, what is the actual figure that we look at to decide how loaded is the cluster. It can be throughput, it can be connections, it can be the number of tenants that this uh, cluster is taking care of, nodes, route domains. Route domains is by kind of um, a parallel forwarding plane similar to the things that you find in Cisco uh, like uh, are necessary when you have to share the data plane across tenants and they can have overlapping IPs you use in the background route domains. But this is all transparent to you. The agent is doing it, you never see them. But of course, you can, in the configuration file for the plugin, you can modify the algorithm so that it suits better the needs of, of your customer. And uh, we are reaching the end. So this is about the roadmap of the five. And I'm not going to go in detail uh, for all the things that we have because it's quite a lot. So that, as you can see in this slide, it's the same that was presented in, uh, in the OpenStack Summit in, in Texas. And uh, we have gone through all the, the things uh, uh, already in this part, but all of this on, the, on this side is still under development. And I would say that the priorities for F5 now are to developing additional heat templates that suit uh, most of our customer needs to automate the deployment of F5 configurations. And we look at our customers about what is the most areas that we want to to work with us uh, regarding it and how they want to use the Elvas plugin. But the Elvas is something defined by the community you know, and we are part of the community, so we have to wait for the community to decide any of these as a service implementations that are plugins to neutral. The community, together with the five, uh, will decide if these functionalities will ever get implemented. It's quite likely we will get, for example, HTTPS of load or SSI termination using Elvas in the future because it's interesting and now we have this where we can repository that can store the, the certificates for us in the OpenStack Cloud. That's one thing we needed. And in the future, we would like to also provide Firewall as a service. Um, we cannot do that today because in order to do that, we have to become a layer 3 agent in a uh, plugin to uh, uh, OpenStack Neutron. And that is under, under an implementation underway that also has to be agreed with the community. So, yeah, if you cannot remember any more than this, I think this would be the slide to remember for you from my presentation that uh, there is the place where you can go to find all of our uh, drivers, code, and all of our open source uh, configurations uh, like Elvis driver and hit templates and all of that. And you are free to modify them and to uh, upload them to, uh, to the GitHub repository. If you search for a 5 GitHub, you will get to this page, it's very simple. And uh, this is just one proof that there is a uh, kind of paradigm change in the philosophy for the five uh, in the way we approach uh, uh, public cloud. And we believe in a, we believe in open source for one reason that is the most neutral and neutral approach for us. And uh, we have seen it; it is very successful today, uh, all over the world in service providers but also enterprises. So, so that's all for me. If you have any questions.
Feel free. No questions? Okay, so that's it.